Yeah. I think she, she brought a very important point with regard to that. You know, it starts with intentional, let me confront this thing type of uh, uh, thing, uh, building bridges. And building bridges, you can build them through relationships. As you know one, as you know two, as you know, that's the safe space from which you can start growing into a community from a, from a safe point of view. You are right. The, you can't, even Nadia, she never just walked into a, she was, I was there helping her. I was there, I've been there with Nadia. The community trusted her, the community protected her because of our, 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 our long-term friendship that we have. So it is, it is, it is a, um, it is a from relationship. You, you, if just walking into any community is dangerous as a stranger in any way. Even for me, if I walk into, uh, uh, what's, What's that town? Orania. Man, it's like, well, France, what are you doing? I think even some of my white friends will say, hey, I think you, you, you can. Yeah, yeah. So you are right. You, you can't. When the perception is strong like that, by the way, I have that type of perception towards Nigerians. I'm struggling in the same way you struggle with Nigerians. God knows about it. Everyone knows about it. I've got a very good professor in, in Nigeria, Professor Samuel. He's uh, on your, he's a um, very good guy. But I battle to trust Nigerians. I battle. I battle. I tell, I tell him to his face. I battle. Professor, I, I battle. You know, I, I know you, you mean well, and I know you are a pastor and all of that. But how many of the Nigerian pastors have run drug houses and all, do all that? Yeah, yeah. So when, 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 when there is already a big perception like that, you will battle, my brother. But you know what? I'm here. Let's battle it through. I think also it's very it's an intentional choice. Yes. I think our environment creates a bubble that if you don't go out of it, you'll pull attention. You will stay within it. Your your yeah. So it is an intentional choice. But like he says, from a safety point of view, from a safety point of view, I had one, one guy in class, um, I just forgot his name. After teaching and putting all these things, he said to me, hey, pastor, now let's, let's go to the area legend. My uncle's house has been broken into by black people. My um, other family, they've killed. This, 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 this. He says, then how do, you, how do you handle those issues? You tell me. I said, okay, can I answer you with my stories as well? When I gave you my horrific stories, like the one I gave you about children. 
And I said, how do I trust a, a white person ever again? That's the answer I, I'm giving you. You give me, I give you the answer. And then he goes, he says, hmm. I said, the evil knows no color. Evil knows no color. It grabs every single heart it can get and every single mind it can get. If it's black, it grabs it. If it's white, it doesn't care the, the, the mind. So there's no heart and mind that is immune to evil. So as it comes through, through a person and it becomes so personal. By the way, I've, I've got friends that I've lost, uh, some of them uh, to, to even farm, farm, farm men. And, and, and some of them, one of the recent one is Edwin, Edwin Kotze. If you check your, your, um, your, your news, he's, he was on the news. They just, now through, during Corona, the boys came for criminal means and they shot him because he was big. I think, we, I, we don't know the facts, but in my assumption, Edwin will, to, has, he had what we call a fight mode. He would have fought the guys as they came into. He, uh, they shot him while he was Yeah, they shot him. They killed him. So he, I, I, I traveled with him, and I've been with him, and Edwin was a guy who was uh, being helpful. You see, then, then people say, but you see, this is the guy who's been helpful, already in the project of reconciliation and all of that. Now some stupid black guy comes and kills this person. You see what is happening? Now for criminal means, because he was visiting a friend when the criminals came. Things like that, they are very personal to me. He might be white, and in the mind of people, they might think he's just one white guy, but not to me. Because I, he was my friend. We shared things together. We crossed countries together. We did projects in South Africa together. When that happened, it hurt me deeply like he was my brother. I have a lady in Botswana. She stayed in, 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 in um, uh, Elisaraz. Same thing happens. The people that worked for his father for a very long time, she comes from school. She doesn't know what went on between the parents. They killed both parents. What happened? Was it a racial thing? We don't. It, they've been there for years, man. They grew up in that farm. What transpired, no one knows. It was the parents and it was these two guys. To this day, Priska says to me, Franz, I have too many questions. I don't know what to say. I don't want to believe that that was a racial thing. Why? Because these people were like brothers to me. We shared, they were like brothers, and I mean brotherhood that so many people don't even know about. From far, I can say it was a racial thing. The person who's, in, who's affected directly by that, she says, no, I will never believe that. I think there was a thing maybe between me, them and my father, some form of a disagreement and all of that. And that led to that. No life is worth taking in that way. But we don't know the facts. What we have, we can only have perception based on the, the, the gruesome reality of what they have experienced as a family. Unfortunately, those issues as they happen, our feelings go high. That's why we as South Africans, we are feeling these things and these feelings are driving our love. That is a reality. We can name a whole lot of people who are, who are, who are, who are being killed, including, do you know how many black, black people are being killed even by farmers at black at farm, farm, farms? It doesn't make news. But if you go into statistics, you get shocked by the reality on the ground. You're like, wow, I didn't know this was a reality. That's why me now, I'm not going to talk about statistics. That doesn't matter. It's not about that. It's about the real issues that are there in society that affects you personally. Because if I say, no, nah, it's just, this are the studies, it's, it's, it's like I'm driving, it's like I'm shut, sh sh you know, like I'm shutting your real issues, your real feelings to your, to your face. That is not how it's supposed to be. You see, because you know someone, you've met someone, you, you, you are aware of a family somewhere that lost their lives as a result of this thing. And then, Something that breaks my heart deeply. You see, so for me, that is the issue. For me, is that how do we answer that family? Statistics stop there. But how we answer this family? What do we say to this family about what has happened to them? That for me, that's what that's the reality. The criminal element comes in the black face generally. That's why the perception is so strong. 
that it is black people against white people. And that is not the reality. It's, it's a criminal element. We have it. They, break, they broke into my house. Man, they stole even my dog. She knows about it. They stole my dog. Now, if uh, Johan gave, by the way, uh, they gave, Johan and Uomachavi, they gave me a gun. They say, Franz, ah, you put a dog, they came and look, now you need a gun. By the way, I need two big uh, burbles. I really need burbles, like pure breed if I can get. And I need to put it there because they come, they break. Criminals are criminals. Where there's opportunity to get something, they will do that. So it's not only happening to you, but it's happening everywhere. But I'm very sensitive to very personal issues that are happening to you and to your families. I take that very seriously. Mm. And the problem is not, it's not bad people, the problem is evil. And I think it's so easy in our culture, in ourselves, to say because he's black, he did this, and he's black, as I said, because he's black. It doesn't excuse anything, but it's, as you said, it's not black or white. It's evil, it comes in whatever form or color. And we tend to sway in, in that direction because media feeds us all the time. Racial inequality, mm. racial divisions, they want to fire that up. Yes, I mean, they, the, uh, politicians and political formations, they have projects to run. That is something we must be aware of. They, they have projects to run. They, they have goals to achieve. They will use the race cup until Jesus comes. So as they will use the race card, they are not going to stop anytime soon. The question is, how are you going to deal with it, to work with it. and to work with it? And also, it's not only the politicians. Our yeah. own nature. As some, I remember we went to an outreach in India, and you think there's no racism in India because it's not Indian. There's a caste system in India. Yeah. When I got there, I saw that in the human nature, there's a natural sense of Tendency. 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 to go to hate people. Yeah. It's in us. So it's not even the politicians. It's in us. If we don't be intentional, if we're not intentional about loving and, and, and listening to God, yeah. that's going to take over. It's inevitable. It is going to happen. I grew up with the hatred towards the Shanghans as a tribe. Every time we want to date, my grandmother would say, don't bring a Shangan in my house. She hated the Shangans. <laughs> she hated the Shangans. Why? Why? We didn't know. To this day, she died. Well, I don't know why she hated the Shangans, but I knew I wasn't going to date the Shangans because my grandmother will not accept me dating a Shangan. Um, and then later you find that, oh, okay, it's because they had the history. Then she passes that on us. You understand? So. I'm like, oh, wait, 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 grand, grandma. Now, now, now that we are a little bit older, why, why do you hate Shanghans? She will always say, Tch. she won't answer you. She goes, Tch. <laughs> she will never answer you. So, so that's another thing that we must be aware of. Um, um, we can have what we call generational enemies. Have enemies simply because my mother and my father had those things. Yeah. Let me not talk too much. If you have questions, let's yeah, talk. Well, yeah, that's fine. Right. Now I'm here. Um, so I would say from, I think, it's a question that doesn't get answered very often that's truthful. But something like we eat, how would you recommend us to view it? How would you recommend us to react on, on cases where we confront with it? With B E, okay. Be okay. Um, this is this is the reality. The political side of of things will always address things in a way that is um, unfair, in a way that is that 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 wants to benefit a certain group of people. 
Now, it doesn't only happen, for example, like in your case, your, your wife, the BE affects you. In, in a sense that is tribal, you see it in politics where if Jacob Zuma is a Zulu, he chucks everybody who's non-Zulu and he brings his brothers come in uh, type of a thing. It, it happens when Mbeki was, the Corsas were predominant. Now the Zulus, now that this one is Benda, now every Benda is shouting, I'm here, I'm here. Uh, you, you, you will have prejudices of that sort uh, throughout life, especially in the area of politics and big opportunities. That, that happens. Um, it does happen even with, with white people. They have monopolies that they protect uh, within themselves. I wanted to go into certain businesses which were predominantly white and I couldn't. I mean, I, I have a friend, uh, maybe I may not mention his name, who told me to my face, very successful businessman. And we were going into a specific business and he said straight to me, he said, Franz, yo, the problem is you are black. White clients will never accept your business. He says, until you, I don't know if I had a, a way to bleach you, yeah, but your skin is a problem in this industry. And I said, okay, but I'm going to push. I'm that type. When there's a problem, I'll go for it. Now, I pushed. As I was pushing in that industry, guess what happened? They changed the laws. They changed everything in that industry. Just so that, and he told me it's going to happen. He says, you'll see it's going to happen. I'm just preparing you in advance. So, as you see it in the BE thing, there are things like that in society that systematically include, it excludes other people. So this is how to beat the B thing. White people, God has given you something. You have what we call self-determination. You have shown it when you were oppressed by the English. How you got back from that and you became what you are as a people. That constitutes strength on your side. Self-determination. This is what self-determination can do to a people's group. That's what I always challenge black people around it. I say, where is your self-determination? If you had self-determination, by now you would have formed industries. By now you would have formed a whole lot of things. But you don't. Everything that you cry foul about was created by Westerners. So where is your contribution in society? That's what I challenge them with. Now, you have that as a people, self-determination. Every system, if you want to bid it, where, 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 where it, it, it disadvantages you, you must always go high in terms of knowledge. I'll give you a for instance. I've got a friend, he's, a, he's an aeroplane engineer. He fixes uh, aeroplanes. This guy said to me, Franz, the BE thing got to me. And then when I went for an interview, the only thing that disqualified me, could disqualify me was the fact that I was not BE qualified. So I went out of that place thinking I'm not going to get the job. But when coming into all the credentials as a white person, I was very high. I was scoring very high. Now they had to choose in that company whether to hire a mediocre black person simply to fill the gap of a BE qualification or to get someone with high expertise to be productive in this industry. Guess what they did? They had to suspend a BE uh, thing in order to get to a higher skill of this person. Now, that's what you do. How did Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did it in a foreign land? They knew they were disadvantaged. They knew that there's B thing that's going to work against them, if, if we put it that way, in, 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 that, in, in that foreign land. They knew they were slaves already. They are on the side of disadvantage. What did they do? They went in the area of education. They learned the, all the languages of the place. They went, they went high, my brother. They embraced very high skills in that foreign land where it's not even theirs. Guess what happened? Favor went to them. It, they were even appointed by, 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 by local kings and say, I think these are the guys. Who, they did not only have what we call the favor from God, but they, have the, they had the expertise necessary to meet with that favor. 
So you have create an upper hand within yourself. You have the never drop the ball. Encourage every single white young South Africans to rise high above. By the way, there's a generation of black people, middle aged, middle class black people who are rising uh, into, into, into the space. Who don't agree with this thing? I'm one of them. I'm poor, by the way. I don't have money. But I refused every BE opportunity which was given to me to be a friend of any company. I refused. I said, if I have to be a front of any company, I need to work. I need to earn my, my, my right for my money. I don't want to just use my black face for that. I think that is an injustice. And I'm not going to fall for that. Simply because I'm broken, I'm poor, and I don't have money. I want to walk out in everything with my integrity intact. And that I don't compromise. I'd rather go to heaven broke, but with my integrity intact. And for me, I'm saying, whether you like it or not, you are disadvantaged by, um, by a, a, a BE system. I'm disadvantaged by so many things. I wanted to go into a business. It's a, a, a business from Turkey. Guess what? As I go into that, I realize, oops, I'm a black person. And secondly, I'm not a Muslim. I'm not going to go into that business. As I try to open the doors, qualification is you need to become a Muslim first. You cannot even go into that industry. So organized discriminatory things like that will always be there in society to try and keep certain people away from certain things. But we must develop the wisdom of getting to where God wants us to go, irrespective of what people organize against us. And that's the challenge that I'm putting to you. You have it within you, especially us that belong to God, that has God on our side. I think we can rise above this thing. We can one thing we shouldn't do, we must not allow timidity to grab our hearts. We must not allow fear to grab our hearts. There's more in us than even in people who don't know God, who are strategizing against us. Amen. So I can say, I, 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 I sit here and I look at the young pilot who has to make it. And there's a discrimination against that. I cry over that. I meet an old woman and he says, Franz, tell me, how do I go around this? My son... That's the only money I had, took them to school, and now they, they cannot cross this. It's painful. Very, very, very painful. What did that young man do to be discriminated like that? You can change the strategy and, and circumvent that. There's ways to circumvent things like that. And then so that you can, is it, is it, is it going to be as easy? No, it's not going to be easy. It, it, comes, it is going to come with organized inten intentional means. One of the things that I like, which I spoke to Yaku, a friend of mine, he said to me, you know what, as these black guys are crying for free education and all these things, and they're embracing low passing rate and all this nonsense that they want, there's too many black white people are organizing themselves with private uh, universities and all of those things so that they, they get their education very hard. And then they can become internationally competent. And then you're going to see what's going to happen to this one. We're embracing mediocre in the name of politics. You see, so they don't even know that they're disadvantaging themselves because somebody's selling a narrative into their heads and they believe in that rubbish. So with that, I'm, I'm putting that to you. Don't, don't, don't succumb to that. Don't, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego never did. God can raise you as young people. Amen. And you can become the voice and the strength of the Afrikaans community. Maybe it's time that a God must raise a generation within the Afrikaans who can circumvent these things. Go for higher skills, as high as you can. And as you do that, I can tell you, black people in general, they don't like education. And because they don't like education, that is their, their weakest point as a people. Black guys had to fill it because of the numbers that needed to be in the hostel. And it's 
that direct hate, can I say? And um, I'm like, they didn't work for it. Um, yep. I mean, I worked for it and I didn't make it, but I still have faith. Now they get to fill it. Yep. And it's stuff like that that I think um, where there should be system. And also, for example, road stuff, taxis that speak lights and driving to other people. And um, yeah, they, they just, I don't know. Um, but on the other hand, then again, um, let's say for example, licensed um, officers and places like that, if you get in all borders, it happens so many times that I get there and the people just sit there, they, they're not yeah. doing anything, they're not motivated. But the, some of the very cool things for me, then it was so many times that without saying something, another black boy comes in and he's like, what's going on here? And he's like, call them and suddenly they start working. So for me, I think... Yeah. Um, there must be actions for stuff like murders and farm, yeah. farm burn downs and people that's not working and getting your way into education or those sorts. I think if there's harsh, not punishment, but um, controls and actions and effects and, and there's consequences and uh, people can't just get away with everything mm -hmm. and that's now for white and black, I think then the world will start to get right into a direction. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, it's if you can get away with anything, every people is going to push yeah. the limits and see if yeah. they can get away with it. And I think that's now for every race. Yeah. Um, it's just the system is not controlled and monitored as it should. Let me um, confirm something which you've, you've said. Work ethic. Work ethic. Now we're talking generalizations, man. We're talking about generalizations. Work ethic amongst Africans. Africans in general, we're talking in general, they have a very low level of work ethic. In general, we're talking in general. I have issues with that. We have issues with that. That is something from your side as a white person and as a white community that you have to challenge Africans in that, in that space. You do find Africans like me, like you say, it's just a small percentage. But on a, on a, on a, on a, on a more bigger platform, like say at a police station, or at a um, border post, or I mean for me to cross, to cross Bay Bridge, it takes me five hours, man. I couldn't, I mean, not far, I can just go to get to the other side. But you know what? There's someone who's making corruption somewhere in the corner. Someone just decides, let me just go and have a smoke at the time when the, the border post is congested. That is something that I want to put it clearly to you. That's one thing that you as a black community, we're talking generally now, that you have as your strongest point, wherever you find white people working whether managing something whether doing anything they do it excellently i said to one person the other time i'm, I'm talking to a, a black guy if there's a white doctor here and there's a black doctor here who are you gonna go to and he says i would go to a white doctor i said why he says no they, they seem to be more competent and all of it. Now, what he didn't know is I was just asking that question to demonstrate to him a point. That you know what? You can go to a doctor's office and you can wait there for a very, very long time. Somebody just having a chat with a, with a buddy somewhere there. You see, that is something that is undeniably visible to everyone. That is extremely problematic to me and to everyone. I went to, to change, I bought a, a, a watch. Then I, want, I went to, um, I wanted them to shorten it for me. So I went to this black uh, store. And then I was, and I'm waiting. And I know it opens at nine. I have to be there for 10 minutes, get into my car, go somewhere. Now these ladies are drinking tea. It's five past nine. Now it goes into 10 past nine, I kick the door. Now, as I kicked the door, they look at me, I said, then I shouted at them. I said, if a white person was here, which is true, if a white person was here, you would have jumped. 
But simply because I'm black, you want to treat me with, get out of your seat. And then I made a joke, I, I, I made a big issue out of it. And I said, it was stands. I said, I will phone your head office so that you can cancel your part into, into your work. And they were like, oh, well, yeah, but I said, I'm going to call the head office. And this is what you do here. Yeah? I, I will come here and supervise you. Just so that you can get yourself into your work. You know what? The lady was so scared for the first time because black people don't complain. You see, they just comply. So they see me like that, they wonder, who's this black guy? You see, so you do have a very high work ethic, generally speaking. That is something that wherever you find yourself, don't compromise that with a black person. Confront it. If they come late at work, it's, this is not primitive Africa. We don't live somewhere in the bush. We live in Pretoria in 2021, 2020. Oh, I'm already in the next year. <laughs> Confront them with that. But in rural Africa, he knows. People get late. You know why? Infrastructure. They walk five hours to They log five hours to church. If you're going to go work with your time in Africa, you're sitting with a big problem. We take our watches off when we go into Africa. doesn't work like that. You know, you're going to eat at 9 or 10, maybe in the evening. He knows. So in rural Africa, yeah, that's a problem. In Pretoria, that's not a problem. You see, I, but I, I found this very weird. When I took white South Africans to Europe, I saw their African side. I was like, oh, no. Get up. Let's catch the train. Let's do this. One, one guy, he goes to the toilet for an hour. I'm like, are you really white? <laughs> Maybe you've got some black jeans inside. Of <laughs> so, so, yes, but, but I saw that side and I was, I was like, wow, I thought you guys are... When I went to the Bible college, white South Africans who live close by, I, I travel by taxi to get to school, they're always late. Sorry, we are late. Sorry, we are late. And one time they made this big mistake. The same person who always late says, yeah, but this African time, I said, you tell me about African time. Let's count how many times you've been late. And tell me how many times I've been late. No, it's never late. I, I, I'm always an hour earlier if I have to be to class. I'm always like, today I was exactly at six. I'm white, man. So that is, that is, that is how it is. Work ethic, confront my brother. Don't compromise. If there's nothing black about it, that's just nonsense.